Hey everybody, Jackson Galaxy, Cat Daddy on the job, again, as usual, and with much glee, because I love you guys. I, I love talking to you. I love talking to you about what? Nope, not food, not cars, cats. You know, the concept of our cats being indoor cats, uh, I've talked about a lot, and I do have a video all about the indoor-outdoor debate. But I think that we can all agree that cats, for the most part, are indoor cats now. And I like it that way. Personally, I mean, I'll just put it out there. Um, I, I would rather err on the side of my cat maybe not getting every little bit of the outdoor experience in exchange they live a longer life. But that gets us to the point of today's video. The big debate about indoor-outdoor usually centers on our cat's happiness. And the folks who say, I will always let my cats outside, say that because they feel like they are greatly sacrificing their cat's happiness, keeping them indoors. And then the debate will go, well, if they live a shorter life, it was a shorter, happier life. And I would hate for that to have to be your choice. So today's video is how to keep your indoor cat happy. So let's get going. Actually, before I start this, I'm just gonna, I, I really thought of a caveat that I wanna say now, because if I save it to the end of the video, I'm just inviting a whole barrage of comments from uh, you cat mojo tears in the UK and other places in Europe and, uh, and around the world actually, where indoor outdoor is a much different picture than it is in the US. So I always get that feedback like, Jack, I don't know what you guys are talking about, keeping your cats indoors, that's crazy. You know, because culturally it, it is. Live your life, man. If, if it's different where you live, it is. But for those of you, you know, you wouldn't be watching this video right now if you weren't trying to figure out how to keep your cat indoors and happy, right? Because you saw the title of the video and everything. So why am I spending all this time apologizing? My God, what's wrong with me? Let's get to the list, man. The first surefire way to keep your cat happy is catification. Doing your best to bring the outdoors in. The things that make up that sort of outdoor experience, much of which is climbing, different vantage points, different camouflage places, different ways around the house. It's not just going from A to B on the floor, but there's all these places for us to go. Making sure that there are places in windows for your cats to go so they can get enough sun, so that we allow them to follow the sun like the feline sundials that they are, and, and give them that experience that they would be getting outside. There are places on the vertical axis from ground to ceiling where different cats will find their mojo, and they're able to find that more outside than in. And of course, the way to solve that is by you fixing it with catification, with environmental enrichment. I have so many videos on the topic of catification. I got two whole books written with Kate Benjamin about catification, so I don't wanna you know, just go on and on and on about it. But when we talk about what raises cat mojo, it's remembering the experiences of, of tens of thousands of years that inform the cat that's sitting right now, maybe even on your lap, they're all the same. They are all fed the same information through their DNA about how to get through the world, which is just a fascinating aspect to cats. If you have the ability to build a catio for your cats, pff, man, well that's game over right there. Now, we, why are we even talking about them going outside because we have a catio? A catio is cat patio, get it? It is uh, an enclosed area off your house. Um, you should really watch this video right here, which was uh, the uh, Cat Daddy Dictionary, What is a Catio? And it shows you all different types of ideas that other people have sent in to us. I gotta tell you, if you got a house, uh, it's, it's the way to go, and uh, hopefully you'll get some inspiration. But that is the ultimate environmental enrichment for your indoor cat, is having something that's half in, half out. Also, just little addendums here to the catification point of keeping your indoor cats happy. Litter boxes count. Having litter boxes in different areas of your place, not just in one place, spreading it out so that territorially 
it also has importance uh, along with just a place to eliminate. It really does wonders for your cat's sense of territorial security. Another thing is scratching surfaces. So either we're talking about scratching posts, the uh, horizontal scratchers, the ones that go at an angle, all of the above. Scratching is just a part of a cat's makeup. To exercise the top parts of their body, to remove dead sheaths of nail, uh, and to mark visually and scent-wise, all part of scratching, which is why you see trees scratched up, whether they're little cats or lions in the savanna uh, on acacia trees, you'll still see all of those marks on trees. That's how innate it is. So providing them with sturdy, acceptable scratching surfaces and finding out whether your cat likes it to be uh, lengthwise, height-wise, incline-wise, whatever it is, or all of the above, really goes a long way to upping confidence, which keeps them happy. Another way to keep your, your indoor panther happy is play. Play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat. It's not just about getting energy out of them, it's about reminding them who they are. They are hunters. Not only are you using an interactive toy and you're moving around the house and you're, you're not just standing still and waving that wand around, but you're doing it with a purpose. You, that you're allowing them to mimic that hunt and to get that deep sort of almost reptilian brain satisfaction of hunting. But that's when we follow up with a meal afterwards. So they do what? Hunt, catch, kill, eat. Honestly, I can't even tell you how big a deal this is. There are so many people who used to make fun of me because they would tell me what their problems were with their cats. I was like, play with your cat. Play with your cat every day. They're bored, they're frustrated, they've got all this built up raw cat energy. They need to play, they need to get it out of their system. Now, check out the video that should be floating up over my head right now about the way to play with your cat. Um, I talk about it all the time. If you don't have the book Total Cat Mojo, pick it up because there's a whole chapter there about how to play with your cat, but there's videos as well. That's why I'm saying it's such a big deal. I've, I've written volumes on it because it makes cats happy. And that's a, what this video is about, making your indoor cats happy. Play with your cat. So another way of making our indoor cats happy is to remember, you know, one of the things they would do outside, it's not just hunt. Part of it is problem solving. Territorial problem solving, hunting problem solving, staying out of trouble while still hunting problem solving. Those are things that are hard to duplicate indoors, but keeping the mind and the body sharp by still talking to their raw cat is important. So one of the easiest things is puzzle toys. They want food, and in order to get that food, they have to solve a problem. There are plenty of puzzle toys out there that really satisfy that sort of scavenging and hunting need at the same time. And also, you're not just dishing out food, which will also go a long ways to making your indoor cat an indoor chunky cat. So there's a website called Food Puzzles for Cats. Check that one out because it's uh, made by a couple of friends of mine who are behaviorists in their own right and uh, have spent a lot of time studying these food puzzles and uh, ranking them and, you know, are they for beginners or experts? And just go to that website. It'll tell you all about puzzle toys. Another way of occupying mind and body and also just sort of increasing the bond between you and your cat is clicker training. Clicker training is great. If you don't know about this, Jackson Galaxy Project has a, uh, a program called Cat Positive where we go into cat rescues and shelters, teach folks uh, the, the basics of clicker training, just fun little things like high fives and spin arounds and sits and things like that. Cat agility courses, yeah, that's a thing. Cat agility is a thing. Uh, or just obstacle courses, just ways to keep your cat focused on you. They, they have to give to get in terms of treats and praise and they are solving a puzzle in that way. And in the meantime, they're doing something you might want them to do as well. Uh, there's also a video on this channel where my good friend, Samantha Bell, uh, was teaching it at uh, one of our recent cat camps and we captured that on video. So check that one out right there if you wanna know more about clicker training your cat. Clicker training is, is a great thing, but clicker training can also lead to something else, 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 to something else. Harness training. 
It is the way of the future, you guys. Taking your cats for walks is just a great way for them to get outside, to get that exposure, problem solve a little bit, to say, okay, what's this little log about? How am I gonna get up and over it? You know, how am I going to solve problems? Uh, but also just to get all of the information that the natural world has to offer them, but you're doing it totally safely. I can't recommend it enough. Two quick things, well, three quick things. One is that harness training is for the cat that wants to go outside. Don't try to turn your indoor cat in, into an outdoor cat just because you want them to be. Uh, there are some cats who the harness is not a great experience, but getting outside is a terrifying experience. And we have to know, is it something that is good for this cat or not? You know, if your cat gets just as much pleasure from looking out the window, it's all good, you don't have to do it. The second thing is that you wanna make sure that you're finding a harness that your cat can't get out of. That once you get them acclimated to the harness, then you put a leash on it and you walk them around the house. And if there's anything that they're getting scared of, believe me, they're gonna get out of that thing unless they just can't. I really like working with harnesses that are more like vests. They're, they're walking vests. We do sell a couple of those on our website, so just go to jacksongalaxy.com and you'll see the ones I'm talking about. But they have Velcro attachments, they have the clips around them. The ones I don't like are ones that we would call the figure eight, where you have a loop around the neck and a loop around the middle and just something attaching it. I've just seen too many cats wiggle out of those, so just make sure it's wiggle proof. And the third point about harness training is watch this video, this one up here, uh, all about harness training your cats and the benefits and all the other stuff I just talked about. It just goes into it in much more detail. You're gonna hear competing points of view about this, but hey, you're watching my video, so whatever. My point of view is that cats should be with other cats. I really do like to see cats with other cats. I mean, sure, there are cats out there who just want to be alone, but I would say that that's not the majority. And uh, if the introduction is done well, um, then you're gonna be just fine. If you are, and I've said this so many times, my face is gonna fall off from saying it. Whoop, there goes my face. If you're adopting a kitten, please adopt two. It, it just, you think it's gonna be twice the work, it's not twice the work, it's twice the companionship, they learn from each other, they grow together, they may not go through their entire life sleeping in the crook of each other's arms, but they might. They learn how to relationship uh, with other cats and other animals and other things that are not human things, and that is just really beneficial and I think a way to keep your indoor cat happy. The next way to keep your cats happy uh, is through something I call the three R's. What are the three R's you ask? I'm glad you asked. It's routine, ritual, rhythm. The idea here being that cats just really are happier when they have a routine. Cats are crepuscular, which means that they're dusk and dawn hunters, and they know that when the sun is setting to a certain place, time for me to hunt. So my sleeping and my eating all come around that. How do we do that in our homes? And how do we satisfy that need to be, uh, to, to have a rhythm, right? There it is, that's one of the R's. We start by having routines in the house. That's why I, I tell you guys not to free feed your cats, but to feed meals, because that is the backbone of the three R's, is having set eating times and getting them to eat meals, having their uh, circadian rhythms, their body clocks coming more into focus and, and more into rhythm with us is a way for us all to be happy in the long run. So I'm using meals as an example, but once you start doing something every day at a given time, that routine after it's been repeated over and over becomes a ritual, meaning that now it's got importance. Now it is really like part of the fabric of my very being is this routine. Once we've turned a routine into a ritual, that ritual becomes the rhythm of our lives. That is a circadian rhythm. I know what happens when I wake up. I get a sense of security knowing that I have repetition in my life based on where the food supply is, where the sun is, where my sleeping spots are, where the humans are. My body following that rhythm makes me happy. 
another way to make your indoor cats happy, and this is a big one, you guys. Uh, this is not a small point, but that is spaying or neutering your cats. Have your pet spayed or neutered, goodbye everybody. All cats who are adopted from shelters or rescues come spayed or neutered at this point. The one thing that's gonna make your male or female cat happy if they're indoors is not if you're a female going through a heat cycle and if you're a male not smelling females and males outside and having all of your hormones do the talking because all you're gonna wanna do at that point, and I mean all you're gonna wanna do at that point is go outside, get outside. You know, break through the window, break through the screen, run through the door, get out there, and do what your hormones are telling you to do, which is to propagate and defend your territory at all costs. Those are the things that drive the machine when hormones are doing the driving. That need goes away with spaying or neutering your cats. It just makes for a cat that's just not conflicted and having just like a primary purpose that's not being met. So by far, if your cat is not spayed or neutered and you want a quick and easy way to make your indoor cat happy, that's the way. Uh, so do it. Now, our final way to make our indoor cats happy, and this should be easy for you guys, man, because hopefully you're doing this already, but it's making space in your day to spend with your cats. Spending some time investing in your relationship is really what that comes down to, however that looks like to you. Again, it could be as simple as, you know, any of the things we've talked about with play or, in other videos I've talked about clicker training and things like that that are just, you know, bond building activities. Just hanging out, just, you know, calling them over and having them come over and maybe it's a scritch on the head or maybe it's just them sitting next to you and you talking to them gently, whatever it is. And again, you're like, Jackson, what? You really gotta tell us that? I mean, if we have cats in our lives, it's because we want the companionship of cats. Yeah, that, but that is a key word, companionship, that, that especially these days, we might just sort of gloss over. So I'm just here to remind you, you know, it's not just play with your cat, play with your cat, play with your cat. It's about, you know, be with your cat, be with your cat, be with your cat. And, uh, that's it. That's the easy one that I'll leave you with today. All right, you guys, thank you again for all of the suggestions for videos that you've given because that's how these videos get made is that you clearly want to see them. So don't forget to put your suggestions in the comments. Don't forget also that we uh, premiere new videos pretty much every Catterday morning uh, along with the shorts that we're now putting out. So that leads me into telling you to subscribe to this channel and to ring the bell so that you get notifications whenever either a Meow.